So far on this channel, we've been doing the sonnets in order. And today I want to do something different. Yeah, no, I don't. I want to do the next sonnet. Sonnet four. Nothing highbrow here. This is Low Hanging Shakespeare. Hey, hey, welcome back to Low Hanging Shakespeare. I am your host, Reese. Let's just dive into Sonnet 4. As usual, we're going to start off with a cold read. Everyone's favorite part of Shakespeare. Unthrifty loveliness. Why dost thou spend upon thyself thy beauty's legacy? Nature's bequest gift nature's bequest gives nothing but doth lend and being frank she lends to those are free then beauteous niggard why dost thou abuse the bounteous largesse given thee to give profitless usurer why dost thou use so great a sum of sums yet canst not live for having traffic with thyself alone Thou of thyself, thy sweet self, dost deceive. Then how, when nature calls thee to be gone, what acceptable audit canst thou leave? Thy unused beauty must be tombed with thee, which used lives the executor to be. Some of that's going to be fun. I like all the questions. That's fun. Shall we go line by line? now okay let's do it i don't feel like writing in pink this time let's do green line one unthrifty loveliness why dost thou spend unthrifty i think that means the same thing as it means nowadays it means you don't spend well you spend on frivolous things loveliness here is an interesting word i almost feel like it's a nickname for a person like you're calling somebody my unthrifty loveliness. Whoever or whatever loveliness is, it is being personified because we do have thou right there. We're addressing this to the unthrifty loveliness. So that's interesting. So another word for unthrifty, um, wasteful, maybe. This line mm, is pretty easy to figure out. It's saying, why dost thou spend? Why are you spending Something, we don't know what, we gotta check out line two, see what happens. Upon thyself, thy beauty's legacy. This line again, doesn't really need to be put into different words. It's pretty straightforward. The first two sentences are asking, why are you using your beauty only for yourself? The word legacy being the future of your beauty. Why are you wasting that on yourself? Why are you wasting all your potential on yourself? Wasteful hottie, why do you spend all your potential hotness, aka babies, why do you spend that all on yourself? Nature's bequest. So that's the G-rated way you could look at those first two lines, but this is low-hanging Shakespeare. Let's hang low. We've got the word spend, followed by on thyself, which... I don't know about you, but that gives me a very specific mental image. I want y'all to just share in that with me. The picture, I mean, not anything more than the picture. Mentally. In your own head, please. We're not, we're not that disgusting here. So the first line could read, Why are you wasting all of your loveliness being alone? Or it could mean, Why are you so much yeah yeah think about it nature's bequest gives nothing but doth lend what nature gives to you isn't given it's lent to you nature loans things out and then will take it back from you later shakespeare is saying that your loveliness and your hotness right now that you have will go away it will be taken from you. You're not going to stay hot forever. I've also highlighted the words gives and lend because they are 
antitheses, and I think they're really important to make note of. And being frank, she lends to those that are free. Modern people would say to be frank to mean like to be honest or to be serious, but in this case, it could mean to be generous as well. So Mother Nature, who is generous, lends more to people who are liberal with their love and affection and bodily fluids because mother nature is generous she lends more to people who give freely first quatrain over and out then beauteous niggard why dost thou abuse this line starts off the quatrain with an incomplete thought. It also starts off the quatrain with everyone's least favorite Elizabethan word. If you want to find out about the word niggard, check out my first sonnet video. There's a little bit of information in there. Basically, it means someone who is stingy and has no relation to the modern day word that it resembles. The first quatrain asked why you're being unthrifty with your loveliness. So this second quatrain is probably going to build on that. This first line says, you beautiful miser, why are you abusing something that we are going to finish in the next sentence? The bounteous largesse given to thee. Bounteous is like bountiful, largest, it could be money, a gift, basically. You beautiful miser, why are you misusing the insane gifts that nature has given you? And again, we have a G-rated version and we have the low-hanging Shakespeare version. Think of the word abuse. It can have a violent connotation to it. How do you abuse your beauty? How do you misuse God's gift by abusing it? Consider it. So, beautiful miser, why are you misusing dot 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 the amazing gifts, the large gifts you've been given? Profitless usurer, why dost thou use? Profitless, I think same meaning without profits, not very Ferengi. A usurer is a money lender. The second use could be to use up or again, we're talking about spend. And again, we have another question that's being started with this line. So we don't know what they're using or in what way they're using it. All we know is we're calling you a name, we're calling you a profitless usurer, and then we're asking you why you are spending something in a certain way. Wasteful asshole, why are you spending dot dot dot? So great a sum of sums, yet canst not live. So much money. Sums like arithmetic, so maybe why are you using so much money? But you're not making a living with all of the dollars you have. Somehow you're still broke. So much money and time, but can't make a living. That's quatrain too. For having traffic with thyself alone. Okay. Having traffic. Traffic, like when you're stuck in a group of people and you can't move. But how can you have that with yourself? Because... If you only have traffic with yourself, because if you're only f***ing with yourself, let's find out what happens. Thou of thyself, thy sweet self doth deceive. That's a fun line to say. If you're following along at home, please read that one out loud to yourself. Thou of thyself, thy sweet self doth deceive. Mm, that's a tasty line. You're only lying to yourself. Essentially, that is a really beautiful line, but we could sum it up in four words. You are lying to yourself. If you're only fucking with yourself, you're fucking yourself. 
You are only lying to yourself. Then how? When nature calls thee to be gone, when nature decides that it's time for you to die, When Mother Nature decides that it is time for you to be dead. What acceptable audit canst thou leave? An audit, like when you're getting your finances investigated, it's when you look really closely at something. When you're dead, what are you gonna leave that people can look really closely at? What will you leave behind for others to enjoy or to look at or to inspect. Before we move on to the final rhyming couplet, I want to examine the structure of this sonnet. So far, I think this one's my favorite because it follows such a strict structure. Each of the quatrains mirrors the others. And okay, so the real reason I think this one's my favorite I want to look at the last word in each line. Spend, legacy. Lend, free. Abuse, give. Use, live. Alone, deceive. Gone, leave. Come on. That right there is enough, you know? Another reason that I've liked this sonnet a lot so far is all of the clever ways we are addressing the person. Profitless Usurer would be a good band name. Y'all can have that one for free. All of that loveliness does make me really like it a lot, but also I am really loving the double meanings behind a lot of these questions. How it can be, well, why are you spending so much time on your own? Or it could mean, why do you have a drawer full of unmatched socks? All right, that's enough of that. Time to see what that final rhyming couplet is going to add or take away from what is so far my favorite sonnet. Thy unused beauty must be tombed with thee. This gift from Mother Nature that has been lent to you, if you don't use it appropriately by not masturbating and loading that semen up into a uterus, all of that beauty is just going to go straight into the grave right there with you. If you don't do anything with it, your beauty is only going to go to the grave with you. Which used lives the executor to be. First, let's talk about used. It's used, but because Shakespeare liked to do iambic pentameter. Sometimes those past tenses have to be pronounced that way to make it match the desired meter. You can usually figure out when this needs to happen on your own by just counting the syllables in a line. If there's only nine syllables in a line and there's a word that ends in ed in there, it's a decent bet that you could say used, bothered, remembered, a decent bet. This line also has the executor, the executor, the executor. I never know when to use the or the. English, I think is my first language, the executor. That's probably why there's an apostrophe there. The executor is just easier than knowing if it's the executor or the executor. Anyway, all this line is saying is the beauty that is wasted and will die with you, if you use it, it can be your executor. We're talking about death in the previous couple lines. When you die, usually your children could execute your will, but if you don't have children to execute that will, I think the executor here is more metaphorical. This is talking about more prolonging beauty and progeny and prolonging the family line, prolonging hotness. If you misuse Mother Nature's gift and don't have children, all of your hotness goes to the grave with you. But if you 
do use the gift appropriately, then your beauty lives on. But if you do use it and make babies, your beauty will live on through them. Oh, and they can execute your will for you after you're dead. That's the line by line done. Time to read. Unthrifty loveliness, why dost thou spend upon thyself thy beauty's legacy? Nature's bequest gives nothing, but doth lend. And being frank, she lends to those are free. Then beauteous niggard, why dost thou abuse the bounteous largest given thee to give? Profitless usurer, why dost thou use so great a sum of sums, yet canst not live? For having traffic with thyself alone, thou of thyself thy sweet self doth deceive. Then how, when nature calls thee to be gone, what acceptable audit canst thou leave? Thy unused beauty must be tombed with thee, which used lives the executor to be. I don't really have anything else to say about this. I like this one the best so far. This one might make a fun monologue someday. That was fun. Finally, there's a little bit of naughty shit in there and we can talk about adult themes. Fucking finally. Shakespeare, gosh. Anyway, let me know what you thought of Sonnet 4. I hope that my breaking it down for you made it a little easier for you to understand and also gave you some really nasty mental pictures. Enjoy those. Those are from me to you to keep forever. You're welcome. What was your favorite double meaning in this? If you got a question, ask it in the comments. Tweet me. Ask me on Instagram, Facebook. Send me a care. Oh, yeah. Send me carrier pigeons. Liketh and subscribeth. Thou of thyself, thy sweet self dost deceive. I, that might be my new mantra. When your daily mantra is a tongue twister, like what does that say about you? So I guess if you're a licensed psychotherapist or whatever, you can tell me what that means about me in the comments as well. Thanks.